Hello everyone, Roy here, the Affordable Mechanic. Today I'm working on a 2011 Chevy Impala, and if you've watched my other videos in my series, yes, this is the car that I replaced the engine in. So why is it back? Well, this car unfortunately does have a number of issues. I'm taking it one step at a time. The engine obviously the most important so the car can drive and then working through the rest of the repairs as the customer is able to afford them. Today, we have a leaky radiator and a leaky power steering pump. So we're gonna be replacing both of them. So we have a new power steering pump and a new radiator and let's get started. All right, first I'm going to start with the radiator. On this repair, we're going to remove the bumper cover. Let's get started on that. First thing we're gonna do, get these bolts out. Okay, now we are gonna go to the clip tool. So the way these bumpers attach to the fenders is there's one 10 millimeter bolt and there's a 10 millimeter nut. So what you want to do is get you an extension and a 10 millimeter socket like that. I think this is a 12 inch extension with a 10 millimeter on my power ratchet. Now we do the same thing on the other side. Worst thing about working underneath the car, stuff falls on your face. I do have safety glasses, but like an idiot, I'm not wearing them. I'm gonna go get them. Now the bolt. So this is all of your hardware underneath. So the clips you have, this uh, goes into the hole, and then this little peg goes into this. And as it presses in, it spreads the end of this, and it holds the panel in place. So to get them out, they're all going to be pushed all together. So you got to get your tool under this, pry up on it. And that could be a challenge sometimes because these are underneath the car, so they get little bits of dirt all stuck in this area. It makes them difficult to come out. I do keep a small stock of miscellaneous clips so I can replace these if I do break them. When I pull the bumper off, I'll show you how these bolts and that nut I was talking about work. But these are the two bolts that you take out from the a uh, more rearward part of the bumper so more towards the rear of the car are these two 10 millimeter bolts so next is remove hardware from the top there are these clips here push clip might be it it's holding this thing on there's a close-up of the clip pull the plunger and just pop the whole clip right out of the hole there are four of those on the top unplug the fog lights now let me show you these brackets this is where the bolt goes through and holds to the fender this is that other stud that's the nut underneath that you have to undo what that does is it releases tension on this stud here and then that slides in to that on the fender and it's like that on both sides now these fog light plugs they plug into the fog light itself the bulb and these tabs hold it in place. Here's the fog light bulb. Those tabs go over these little notches here and then it plugs in the bottom here. There you have it. There is a front bumper to the car and now we have much more access to everything on the front. So move this out of the way. I'm gonna take the catch pan, open this up. Now it's draining. You don't want to take these plugs completely out. So once you have a pretty steady flow, just stop unscrewing it. If you take the plug all the way out, it's just gonna gush out the back. Now, take the cap off. Now this is a leaky radiator, so I don't know how much coolant we're actually gonna get out of this thing. Probably low. It may not. Um, I believe he kept some in the trunk. I was topping it off. That's what I advised him to do until we could do this repair. Keep an eye on his uh, temperature gauge. Keep a gallon of coolant in the back. While that's draining, I'll remove the engine cover. Start getting access to everything. Let's get started on that. Remove this cover, remove the oil fill cap. I know what's happening. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you remove the oil fill cap. And this thing just pops right off. It's held on by these grommets, this one here and this one here. That holds it on to two studs on top of the engine. The reason this is a pain, to have that engine cover, you have to have this filler neck right here. This thing just unscrews from the valve cover. When you're trying to remove the fill cap to fill your oil, this likes to come up with it. So you have to hold this still with some pliers and undo that. A lot of times what you can just do, if you just eliminate the engine cover altogether, take your oil fill cap, put it directly into the valve cover. 
just like that. It makes life a lot easier. The engine cover really doesn't serve any purpose. It's just an aesthetic piece. You don't see the engine. To make my life easier right now, I'm going to do that. I'm going to see if I can speed up this draining here so we can move forward with this. One step that I definitely forgot, disconnect the battery. Just remove the negative cable and shove it out of the way so it doesn't touch anything. Now that that's done, I'm going to remove the upper radiator hose, speed this along. That's why we're leaking. This is a common failure point on radiators with plastic tanks. The plastic becomes brittle over time and pieces like this break off. Luckily, this part of the radiator is an inlet from the engine. So the coolant flows from the engine into the radiator. That means that any pieces that have broken off will be stuck in this tank, and any smaller debris is likely to be trapped in the radiator lines. All of this debris will be removed since we are replacing the radiator. I'm going to remove the hoses here. The radiator is just dripping now, so I think most of the coolant is out. So I'm going to close this valve and put the camera over here. On this side, I need to remove the lower radiator hose and transmission lines. So right here, right there, is one transmission line. That black collar you pop off, and there's a little clip you pull out, and the line pulls straight out. There's the other one underneath the car. Same thing. Pop the collar off, take the clip out, and right next to it, that's the lower radiator hose. Clip tool work well. Get these little colors off. Just kind of, just kind of press them off. It doesn't take a whole lot of force. And the clips are a little more tricky. And it's such a tight space. It's really hard to show you. But I will try to paint as clear a picture as I can. That's not a good spot. You know what? I'm gonna get this out of the way. The lesson that took me a while to learn is that sometimes it's better to remove something that's in your way than trying to struggle to get around it. attached to this cable over here and you see what I was doing not really there it is so this cable it's actually the shift linkage all I need is just this out of the way right here now I have room to get my hand down here and I can kind of feel what no where I'm working pry it on the side then you gotta hold one side pry out the other side that's what you don't want to do that didn't hit the ground hooray it fell somewhere where it'll just fall out and hit the ground whenever you're driving. Okay, well, that clip is out, so now got the catch pan down there. With this, we'll just pull right out of here. It's a little force, but it goes. I'm gonna go underneath and do the same thing with the other one. Okay, now the lower radiator hose. Okay. Let me show you what all I did. Just came straight out of there. Once that clip is out of the way, once I can find those clips, I will show you what they look like. Underneath, there's the lower transmission line. There's where it goes. Hose is off. Okay, everything is disconnected. We have the two lateral engine mounts. These keep the engine from rocking from side to side, front to back rather, since this engine is in sideways. We need to get those out of the way. These are 15 millimeter bolts and one 13 millimeter. And then this is a 15 millimeter bolt and nut. Let's get those out of the way. We'll start with the 15 millimeter. <laughs> And we'll switch to the 13 millimeter. So when you undo these 13 millimeter bolts, the engine will rock backwards. So just be ready for it. We're gonna switch back to the 15 millimeter, as well as get a 15 millimeter wrench. Do your best to not let that not drop down. I suggest screwing the nut back on the bolt so you keep them together. Now these lift up on the back and slide them back towards the engine. 
like that. I don't think there's a left and right, the same part number. Never a bad idea just to kind of keep them in the same orientation. Next, we have two brackets that are bolted to the backside of the upper tie bar. There's a grommet that slides over the radiator. They're held in by 10 millimeter bolts. You'll notice when these come out, the radiator will start to be able to swing backwards. What you do with these brackets is just lift them off of the fan shroud. Again, it looks like these are the same part number and interchangeable. However, never hurts. Just set them in the same orientation. So looking towards the upper tie bar, so those two brackets slid over these peg, bolted into that hole. Same thing on that side. Now we have this wire harness here. Pulls off. It's kind of rocket back and forth and it'll come off. This one will use a clip tool and you can pry that out. It might break and that's okay if it does. I'm looking down from the top now. It has a wire harness attached right here and then you have two plugs on each fan motor. This tab right here, you lift it up and then push it out. And it's the same over here. There it is. Lift up on this tab, push it out. For that, you have a 10 millimeter bolt on both sides. And so you undo those and then the fan shroud will lift right out. So we're gonna unplug both fan motors, separate the harness from where it's attached to the fan shroud, undo the two 10 millimeter bolts at the top of the fan shroud, and then the whole thing should lift right out of there. So let's get that done. God. Now, the 10 millimeters. Okay, now with the fan shroud out of the way, we have to get the condenser off of the radiator. But we're not gonna remove the condenser because then we'd have to discharge the AC system. So there's your radiator, fan shroud's all out of it. So we pull the radiator forward and it reveals the condenser. Now, this condenser is held to the radiator by two tabs that are just slid into place. So what we need to do is first disconnect the, not disconnect the AC line, but we're removing it from this bracket that's held to the radiator. So that's one 10 millimeter bolt. There is nothing on the other side that needs to be disconnected. So once that's done, we'll basically lift up on the condenser and that should slide it out of the radiator. At least that's what I'm gonna to try to do. So let's see how this works. Okay, that's gonna be fun to put back. Of course, they put that bracket where you have to undo the lines to remove the bracket to get it out of the way. We're not doing that, so this is how it is. Okay, there we have a radiator. These tabs here are where the condenser slides into place. Right there, right there. And on this side, right there, and right there. Let's get the new one. Okay, we have our new radiator, customer provided. Now, we'll have to transfer the boots off of the old radiator to the new one. The easier thing though is probably to just set these straight into the lower tie bar. This is the lower tie bar. Now, I didn't detail it by any means, but I just kind of got some of the moisture up. Some of the dirt, a lot of it's just road dirt. I also cleaned these shoes or boots or feet or whatever you want to call them. They slide in this hole and this adjusts from side to side on that side, but then on this side fits directly in the hole. So we'll start that side first and then set this side down. All while slide it in between that space. This, this bracket right here is what screws into the radiator. Let's get started. There we go. Remember what I just said before about it's easier to remove something than to wrestle around it. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing. What's in the way? The battery. You get caught in the trap of, well, I shouldn't have to do it. Well, I'm not gonna. Well, then you cause yourself headache that's unnecessary. Position it out of the way. This battery terminal is so mashed up, I can't get a wrench on it. I'm just gonna have to nice grip it. Yeah, 
these procedures don't necessarily save time. They save headache. You know, this battery tray is all full of coolant too. I'm just gonna pop it out. and give me a little more space even. battery tray look at all that room I have now I'm gonna wipe all that up though there's battery tray it's held in with four 10 millimeter bolts you do not have to remove this I'm just doing it because to save my temper and mental well-being I'm removing it but that's all nasty so I'm gonna wipe it up not perfect but improved that's all we're looking for okay now Let's see how well we can slide this in easier. No, it's still going to be fun. Now, line up. I think that's on. Whew. Look at that. The new radiator came with new clips. That's so nice. See yeah, a little protrusions right there. That's the clip. You see it's all sitting down in the boot. Right there. And right there. Everything is in place. Highly recommend removing that battery tray. That was gonna be a wrestle match if I didn't do that. So I'm really glad I did. Before I put the fan shroud in, I'm gonna put that lower transmission line and the lower radiator hose in place. Then this tab right here, that's where the shroud slides in. Once the shroud is in place, then I can put the upper transmission line in. First, you put that bolt in place. For those who don't know, when you put on a radiator hose clamp, you want to feel where the end of the radiator piping is, and you want to put the hose clamp just on the other side of the lip. You want to put the hose clamp on this side. Since that's going to drop out, get a quick spin. Motor is not sounding the greatest. Oh, this might be something that we want to look out for. I want to say it needs to be replaced right now because it still moves very smoothly. But that's not a good sound. That'll need attention in the future. I will let him know about it. There's a little bracket kind of in the way. That side's in. Okay. Let's bolt it up. Show you how these transmission lines go in. So I have this one just kind of sitting over the edge here. Keep it out of the way. So I'm gonna put it back under the harness. You just put it in there. There it is. Get that click and kind of tug on it, make sure it's set in there. You gotta kind of fish a little collar back up it. And that just clips right back over it like that. And it just basically covers the clip. That's all it is, but that's it. That's how they go on. Now the bolts top of the fan shroud. Right, now I'm gonna put that battery tray back in. All that's left is front motor mounts and the upper hose. Start putting everything back together.
power steering conflicts right off the top. It's got two lines that go into the side here. It has bolts that you access through the pulley to remove the pump from the engine, bring in a lot closer. To get started with this, what I've done here is I have zip tied the belt to this bracket here. And so the idea being when I take the belts off of here, it won't completely fall off. So hopefully that'll work. We'll see what happens. My 3 8 ratchet right here fits perfectly down this side to the tensioner. And all I need to do is push down on it, slide the belt off of that power steering pump. There we go. Hopefully It'll stay somewhat in place with that zip tie. So I don't have to fish this all the way around because it is not an easy belt to put on by yourself. We have three 13 millimeter bolts that hold this on. Before I remove those, I'm going to make sure I've got everything out of the way. So I grab a clip tool, pull the clip out here. This is the harness that goes to all of the fuel injectors. Now, you do the three bolts. Third bolt. Now this slips straight out of here, more or less. Now what I want to do, so I don't make too much of a mess, I'm going to use my end pump here to vacuum out as much fluid as I can from the reservoir. Okay, now I'm gonna do this hose here. Position it out of the way. Comes out a lot easier. And now, I need to take this line off. And there you have it. One power steering pump covered in fluid as it is leaking. Probably leaking from behind the pulley. I think these gloves have had it. Put some new ones on. Those never goes on as easily as the first pair. Unboxing time. So, you can't buy a power steering pump all in one piece. The power steering pump and the pulley come separately. With a lot of patience and some of the right tools, you can remove the pulley and reuse it. I recommend just getting another one because if you remove the other one and you press it back on, you won't really know you warped it until you start it. You can't spin it quite fast enough for it to be obvious unless you really bend it. So, I got it in pulley as well. The customer provided these. I don't really know where they came from. style dipstick. First we need to put the pulley on it. So it slides on here. It's a press fit. So to do this you're going to need bolts and you thread it into this bolt in the middle and you basically tighten it down until it brings it all the way down. You can see on the old one it needs to sit flush with that post so it needs to go a little ways. I could probably find a bolt that might work. I'll take a look. Look what I found. I found a bolt that threads into this thing. Now I can just draw it in. Almost. Perfect. I'll find out the size of that bolt. Make sure to put it on the screen. All right, here we are. Time to put this thing all back together. So first, I'm going to put the pressure line on. Now that that's in place, go ahead and slide this back down in position. Get this line on. all the way in. Now let's see if my zip tie trick worked. I think I've got it. Put my wrench 
out of there. Let's take that zip tie off. That was a good little trick. All right, plug this back in. Put the clip back in it. Back on. Most power steering systems, you can take the cap off, start the engine, turn the wheel back and forth until all the air bubbles come out. Not the case for Chevys. They have to have the air vacuumed out of it, so you need a little hand pump. The way we're going to do this with power steering, we want to fill the reservoir. You want to fill it to the cold line. Not even on there yet. Still not on there yet. There we go. Fill it to the cold mark. So you vacuum this up. Just let it hold a vacuum. This one's not going to hold. It's not because the whole system's leaking. It's just the design of my wedge versus this cap. It's just not very compatible. Just kind of make do with what I have. You usually want to hold it there for about five minutes. Okay. Now the level to drop a little bit. So that's what you want. That means you pulled the air out. We're going to do this again. Just go up a little bit at a time and keep checking. So you don't want to overfill it. There. You want to screw the cap all the way down accurately. Check it. Over. Back up the cold mark again. I'm going to do this one more time. It's not sucking any more air. It's actually bringing fluid. That would mean that there is no more air in the system. Put the cap back on and we'll start it once we put some coolant in it. Which is our next step. So I already have the radiator cap off. <laughs> Okay, this needle hasn't budged. The next step is filling with coolant. And there we go. Get to undo the air hose. Check the level in there. Right there at the top. That is full. So now, I'm going to put the front bumper back on and put it back on the ground. This repair is basically done. It's got a brand new radiator in it, full of antifreeze. It's got a brand new power steering pump in it, full of power steering fluid. Let's get started. First thing you want to do is plug the fog lights back on. One done car. I don't have the engine cover back on. I'll just put it on. Okay, let's start this thing. Gotta hook up the negative. If your car is making that clicking sound, what that is, either the blend door is stuck and the actuator is trying to move it and that clicking is the gear slipping, or the actuator is just bad, or both. Unfortunately, it's a dash removal in order to fix it. Most people just kind of live with as long as everything's working. Power steering feels pretty good. Power steering sounds really nice. That pulley is not wobbling. Now I just need to let it run so it gets to temperature. Make sure that thermostat opens up. We'll take it for a drive and see how she does. Check the power steering fluid again. And that'll be time to clean up. Okay, it is to temperature. It hasn't gone up. Everything's looking pretty good. I'm gonna do a quick test drive and see how everything works. I'll be right back. One last look. Good. 
little more carcinogenic fluid. Top it off. Full hot. We're good. That is a radiator and power steering pump replacement on a 2011 Chevy Impala 3.5 liter V6. Be sure to let me know what you thought about this video. If you have any suggestions for other videos you'd like to see, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, tell your friends. If you're in the North Texas area and you need a repair, I'll put my link to my Facebook page in the description. Feel free to book an appointment. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. That engine sounds pretty good. It was only supposed to have about, I think they said 75, 78,000 miles. It seems to be running pretty well. Oil looks to be in decent shape still. Cleanup time.